Keith has been wearing a continuous glucose monitor for the past couple of days, and we wanted to see what a high protein day would do to his blood glucose. Here's what we found out. All right, Keith, so how did you go about testing a high protein day and what does that mean? What is high protein for you? So for me, high protein, I would typically do pretty good around 40 to 50 grams of protein per day. Right, which would be for your weight, about 170, it would be about what the RDA is, the recommended yeah, daily amount. It might even be a little, right bit, little bit lower than the RDA. Might be. So, mm -hmm. um, so I actually went you know, quite above that. Um, so I had about 138 grams of protein okay. this day, okay. um, which is, you know, three, two to three times more than what I would typically have. Okay. And um, what did you measure and what were the results? So I measured uh, uh, glucose uh, with my continuous glucose monitor and I measured ketones. Uh, and I should say that I did start out, I was about 15 hours fasted. Yeah. Um, well. So I had a little heavy cream in my coffee, okay. you know, in the morning. So it wasn't like a strict caloric fast, but um, I didn't have any protein or any carbs, um, you know, prior to doing this. Yeah. And so what, what were the results that you came up with with your glucose? And then you also tested your ketones. I did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and you tested your ketones, obviously, with a finger prick finger because prick, yeah. the continuous monitor does not do that. It'd be nice if they would do that. That would be nice. But, but maybe that's that totally that technology is coming. So my glucose, um, during this four hours that I was eating, my four hour eating window, um, I had a low of 56 and a high of 71. So that's what, 15 point range in there. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is that the high of 71 was at the beginning and the low of 56 was at the very end. Right, so now is that what you expected to see from what we kind of gather about a high protein diet? No, I mean, I, I always expected that, um, protein was going to kind of affect my glucose in the opposite direction and it mm -hmm. would actually kind of raise it. Yeah. And um, I've always, it, if I have a high protein day, mm -hmm. I tend to, you know, be a little bit heavier the next day. And I always kind of attributed it to that. Yeah. Well, and so we should also point out that we're talking, what was it, a high of 71 and a low of 56. Right. Now, most people out there who are familiar with blood sugar testing would say that is low right right the where we were having this picnic um our host was a uh, uh is a nurse and uh, when I, I showed her my glucose reading the first thing she asked me was are you okay you know we can give you some peanut butter right. if you need it yeah now so and and that kind of for our savvy watchers are they're probably wondering well where were your ketones right if you don't have the glucose there what were the what was happening with right. ketones so my ketones were 0.4 um, when I started, so that's you know technically just below nutritional ketosis, but I was making some, and they were 0.4 at the end. So they really didn't change during that time as my glucose was you know just gradually, gradually, gradually dropping. Yeah, and so what we really are wondering about with looking at glucose and, and protein, eating protein, is uh, what we're really looking at is is how it's going to affect your ability to lose weight. And so we did not test your insulin directly because we cannot, right? But what, how can we infer what was going on with insulin? Well, you know, initially you would think that maybe there's some kind of insulin effect from meat. I mean, we've, we've seen some of that research that, that some foods don't affect glucose, but they do affect insulin. Mm -hmm. um, looking at the keto numbers staying the same, you kind of have to assume that there wasn't um, a substantial insulin effect from this food. Right, now, because this, they will go opposite. So right. if, as insulin goes up, ketones would right. be expected to go down. Right, you would expect that. Also with that, we have seen the research with the insulinogenic foods, more so with lean meats. Yeah. Okay, and what I was eating at this party was, you know, sausages, hamburger, eggs, those kind of things. So my fat intake on that day was was relatively high too, like it would normally be. Yeah, yeah. So here here we are. You know, this is a, a test of, of one person uh, with 
a high protein, but there was also high fat. So, you know, really, if we wanted to isolate protein, perhaps we would have gotten a little bit of a different. Yeah. But I think probably at the end of the day, what we can conclude uh, is what we've always concluded is that Keith's metabolism never does <laughs> what we expect it to do. It is a, an enigma. It's what it is. All right. Well, hey, for what that is worth, I hope that uh, that uh, gives you some food for thought. Um, high protein diet actually dropped his blood glucose by the by the end. So um, thanks so much for watching. This is part one of a couple of series that we are going to bring you looking at what happens with this continuous glucose meter. So please subscribe and we will see you back here soon. Thanks.